Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Carb Spice. If you are new to my channel, this is a health and fitness channel. And after I had my daughter in 2017, it became a little bit of, well, more of a kind of like a vlog channel as well. And um, if you're looking at me for the very first time, I'm actually currently pregnant as we're going through this pandemic, this COVID-19. And I'm sitting out on the patio, so it's really late in the afternoon and there's no good light right now. But I, I teach, and so for the entire week and the entire day, I've had either meetings, at least three of them, or prenatal appointments because I'm in the third trimester and so my appointments are a little bit more frequent. And honestly, when I go to appointments, those appointments feel like a whole event and I'm too tired to record anything. But I am recording this video because um, one person, I was having this conversation with one person and it was my cousin and she was asking, you know, how are you doing? And, you know, is everything okay? And so and I'm recording this video just to kind of um, touch base with you guys as my audience. I uploaded a video on hyperemesis. That was my very first video. And that was also where I announced my pregnancy. And it was the first video after a very long period of not posting videos because I was so sick battling HG. I'm still unwell. So all these breaks that I'm taking in between talking with you, it's either I'm out of breath or I'm just swallowing I hate to put it that way, but swallowing my spit, which is really disgusting. But that is an issue I've had to deal with um, both pregnancies. I actually have a little spit cup right here, but I don't want to keep spitting in front of you guys. But I try to remain authentic as possible on my channel. Anyway, um, she just wanted to know how I was doing. And honestly, I don't feel like I'm doing great. Um, I'm alive. Um surviving but that is all there is to it for the most part i know there are tons of people there out there um people who have way worse than i do but y'all it ain't easy i'm at the point where i'm just waiting for the semester to be over with so i have one less um responsibility to really worry about and with that hopefully i can focus on just birthing enjoying well enjoying the rest of this journey but it has not been easy i mean you know hg hyperemesis gravid arm by itself is truly a challenge for me i cannot eat as i should i'll link that video so you can go back and look at that video and see exactly why it has been so rough for me um I am a part of this support group on Facebook, uh, Hyperemesis Gravid Arm. There is a support group for that. I didn't know what this was when I was pregnant with Emily, but this time around, I know what it is. But there is a support group. And, you know, thank goodness for this group because I've gotten great support great support if you're hearing noise um it's because the vehicles are passing and i'm out on my patio because i need fresh air um but anyway so eating was really a struggle like you know i i at one time i couldn't eat anything i had to go to the hospital for ivs and all that but um today i was able to keep down a bean burrito because i cannot eat, smell, process, anything poultry related. I may or may not be able to have um, or may or may not be able to keep down a cold tuna sandwich. Um, you know, that is all great, but I cannot have that and I don't feel like having that every single day. But I discovered today I can keep down a bean burrito. So I had that for lunch and again for dinner. I went to Rosa's Cafe. And that is another thing I struggle with. We have a lot of food in the house, um, but I can't stand the smell. And if I cook something, the smell alone is like a struggle. And so after that, I just can't eat it anyway. So I don't even, I cook, but I can't really eat. And that is nothing new. That is a thing sometimes pregnant women struggle with. But with AG, HG, um, 
everything is escalated so i cannot and so i'm grateful for the coupons that i've been getting i'm grateful for a teacher appreciation week that we just went through i'm getting all these deals and so and i've been able to save a little bit on food so y'all it's not easy you know if you look at my channel you know um I pride myself on my diet and my health and fitness and all that, but hyperemesis gravid arm is no joke. I, you know, when I, after this journey is over, I have to look back and really um, thank the people who've supported me and pat myself on the back because there were times I wanted to give up. Um, again, look at my video and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. I wanted to give up on this journey. It was, it, it's, it continues to be very hard. And there were times I, I just think I'm not going to make it. Like, I'm just, I cannot do this anymore. Anyway, um, as far as fitness, and so I try to keep up with some sort of fitness. You know, when I was pregnant with Ebony in 2016, I was at the gym doing whatever, lifting weights. Like, nothing much has changed, right? Um, of course, now, during the pandemic, the gyms are closed. Um, they're set to be open soon, but I'm not going to go back um, at this stage. I've just been doing what I can at home. But the styles the sorts of workouts that i've been doing have changed tremendously so i'm more into um you know pilates yoga i still do a little bit of weightlifting where i can but i do have issues that i have to work around like you know i have to work around the you know around dizzy spells um that is a thing that is common in pregnancy and honestly there are days when i'm just winded like i'm really tired so the energy is not there so i have not been working out much um so and then the other thing is why would i want to push myself if i'm not really eating what am i really working out you know i'm, I'm not trying to body build at this time i'm baby building but it makes no sense if i cannot digest anything and then still continue to burn energy by working out so my workouts have changed a lot now um i have been struggling with my anxiety my symptoms you know I pride myself on the fact that, um, you know, last year I really made a turnaround. I was able to, what I, I would say I, I successfully got rid of most of my anxiety. Like I was 90% better. And um, thanks to just making a complete shift in my life, like, I had to learn how to compartmentalize my worries. I had to pick up good habits like yoga, meditation, rest and relaxation. I had to shift how I managed my, my job, my workload as a teacher. Um, I had to just kind of look at my approach to motherhood and being a wife. There was, I had so much to look at but it paid off and then I had to look at my diet and then supplementation you guys know I talk a lot about um, magnesium and how much that has helped me if you go back to my anxiety videos um, you know I talked a lot about the headaches and the, the, the tension and the ringing in the ears and the feeling of the dizzy spells and all that all that came back to muscle um, tension and magnesium oh my gosh has helped me tremendously vitamin d3 with k2 that was all thrown in in my diet all of those things made a huge difference for me with my anxiety and i just had to learn how to let go of a lot of the things that i was holding on to and honestly that is what did it it took a long time but that is what did it but then i became pregnant um <laughs> And then we got into a pandemic and oh my gosh, everything fell apart quickly. Um, I was, you know, we were just, we, all of us, you know, we were thrown into a situation where we just didn't know what was going to happen. As a teacher, I had kids who were just stressed out, kids who went out of the country for spring break and couldn't get back in because then there was, um, you remember the situation was like they, they had a shutdown at the borders and airports and whatever and kids are still out of the country sending me emails saying you know they can't get this turned in and all that and that's a different story like i'm not even stressing anyone's child right now um so there were the, those hiccups and then you had kids who were just struggling with the change the shift in complete online studies you know and so 
I made that decision to take Abney out of preschool since I was home anyway for the rest of the semester. You know why? Continue to send her to preschool. So I, I kept her home. And y'all, even though I'm a teacher, that doesn't mean I have the experience of teaching little kids, right? So I had to really learn very quickly how to manage Abney at home to make sure she was not coming that screen baby. Like, you know, I let her watch TV, you know, I do. But I also had that responsibility of... um making sure she met her, whatever it was that was on her little curriculum because I don't want my kid falling behind you know as a teacher I want my child to be successful and so we did like half an hour of curriculum in the morning and whatnot and it was a lot it was it it was so much and you know it was kind of hard there was a period of time I, I just sat there and I said oh my gosh I I don't think I can do this I feel like I'm going through HG by myself and no one understands unless you yourself have been through this whole process of um, struggling through hyperemesis gravid arm because even some pregnant women don't know what it is. Um, you're, um, you're just you're unable to relate to, to how debilitating it can be. Um, you know, Ron was still going to work so I had to kind of you know, look at your spouse going to work and I'm like, man, I can't miss going to work as well. And people would say, you know, well, at least you got to stay home. Yes, at least I got to stay home and I didn't have to worry and all that about Amy being in daycare. But understand it was an immediate shift. I, I missed the connection with people um, for a minute there. It was really, really hard just being in the house. Yeah, we got out, we walked around in the yard, we, we did this and that around the house. But there was this part of the connection that I really, really missed. Um, and then, um, you know, slowly but surely, I started developing these issues, like with my blood pressure. I talked about this with my hyperemesis gravidarum. Um, my doctor was so concerned that she referred me to a high-risk um, specialist OB. <coughs> Excuse me. And knowing how, you know, I'm kind of like a hypochondriac sometimes, that that really didn't help my situation at all. Like, I kept worrying. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I felt like I was falling apart, y'all. Um, a lot of things could have factored into that. But she basically said, you know, you, it's, you're probably just really stressed out because, you know, coming into the pregnancy, I wasn't really bad with my diet. But I admit it got out of hand. Um, I was just eating what I could have because it was a matter of survival you know uh i was on a i am still on a really high carb diet um today i got a little bit of protein in with my beans so you know what works one week like you know for two weeks i'll be able to eat something and then the next week it becomes a serious aversion like right now i cannot eat rice let me let me tell you what a, a typical day would be like with meals i would wake up i can have boiled eggs with salt and pepper and plain toast but it has to be a specific kind of bread and I know you will look back at my vlog and see that there was, you know, I had like sausages and things like that on my plate. I can no longer eat that. Then lunch now would be bean burritos or bean tacos. Basically a soft taco with um, refried beans with a sprinkle of cheese. That's it. Okay. Who knows what I'm going to be able to eat next week. I There was a time I wouldn't even think of eating bean tacos. And then dinner is just a struggle. I pretty much have to have the same thing that I had for lunch, which is fine. I'm grateful for that because there are some women with HG who cannot eat anything at all. So there was all of that going on. Um, but as far as symptoms that I'm feeling now, it's just the constant, there is, I, the, ten, the tinnitus is back, the tension is back, the tension headaches, they're back because I can't really sleep how I need to sleep with the ball under my, um, my the cervical area, my neck, the back of my neck. I can't sleep properly. Of course, with this belly, I have to sleep on either side. So that has become an issue. So when I wake up, I'm tense all over because I'm not in a, a very comfortable sleeping position at this point in time. Um, I do have that dizzy kind of thing that's coming back. I can feel that sinking kind of feeling through the floor, like I'm spaced out. Um, tingles here and there. And I know that these are signs of anxiety and they're warning signs that I really do need to slow down and take it easy and so at my last appointment I promised myself I said you know when, when my doctor checked my vitals 
I really wasn't proud of my numbers. Um, I said to myself, you know, I'm going to recommit to myself and recommit to this journey. And as hard as it is, I have to do this. So I just wanted to kind of update you guys, um, just share what's going on. Um, for me right now, what I'm doing are simple things. I work on a simple schedule every day. So in the morning, I focus on Ebony and then put her to nap. And while she's taking a nap, I work on work related matters like grading and things like that. Um, at evening time, nighttime, I like to sit out here on the patio for a couple of hours, just looking at the trees and looking at nature and relaxing. No screen time. No, you know, just unwinding and giving myself a mental break. Um, and I've actually taken up listening to music again and just um, like coloring with Abney and things like that. Those simple things, they seem childish sometimes, but those simple things really are, they're helping me. They're helping me to relax. And I think at the end of the day, that is what it is. I just need to relax and not stress, but it's a process. Some things are easier said than done. When you're going through a pandemic and you're expecting, your level of worry goes up tenfold. You know, it's really, really a struggle, but I'm trying and I will definitely keep you guys updated. So that's it. That's all I have. I'm out here with a blanket because the temperature dropped today by about 20 degrees out here in Texas. Um, not cold, but cooler than I would like. But it's nice. It's a nice evening and I'm just kind of um, enjoying the rest of the afternoon. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think and leave me a comment. Bye. And thank you for responding to my post on the community um tab as well when i post vlogs and things like that and polls and questions you guys really do engage so i appreciate that as well bye